routing the drum voices from contact instruments to separate channels in your DAW is easy when you know how. And by the end of this video, you'll know how. Previously, I've done a video about how to set up contact so that you have multiple outputs that you can address in your DAW. The link is up there. So if you haven't done that already, um, pause this video, go off and watch it, and we'll wait for you. Been there? Done that? Good. OK, let's have a look at what you do now once you've set that up, because that's a one-time deal. This is something you'll have to do in every song. OK, so we're in Cubase here, and we've got contact loaded with our Abbey Road kit. This is too late. If you try to do the separate outputs that I'm going to show you with a kit loaded, it won't work because that kit picks up the outputs that were set up when it was loaded into contact. So the first thing you have to do is get rid of your instrument. So we'll just get rid of that altogether. And we've got a blank instance of contact. Up at the top here, we go to Outputs. And when the outputs come up, you'll see we've got the preset configuration that is standard for contact out of the box, as it were. So what we want to do, having saved our target default previously, which is what's in the previous video. Now, the previous video, by the way, was for contact five, but the same thing works for contact six contact as it's now simply known. Reset our output section and all of a sudden we've got all these extra outputs across the bottom of the screen. With that done we can then load in our instrument and to be frank we don't need to worry about the outputs anymore so we can turn that bit off save ourselves a bit of real estate on the screen. Now in the last video I did I talked about how contact loads far more voices than it needs. And this is particularly true of this song, because if I open, just close contact for a moment and open the drum part, we can see that we're actually using a few cymbals, a snare and a kick. There are no toms, there is nothing else. It's important to know that because we'll come back to that thought in a little while. So what we want to do is to open contact. We want to go into the Abbey Road drummer and we're going to mixer. Now I'll just pull that over there so I'm not in the way. What you have for each instrument is the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, and the toms, etc. All going through an individual effects chain. So there's EQ, there's a transient designer, compression. They're not using tape on this one. The important thing to think about before you start is what mixer configuration you're going to use because we're going to be altering the overall mixer configuration. So in this case we have one, two, three, four, five different mixer configurations. If you choose the wrong one, all is not lost because down here we have for each instrument, oh look, one, two, three, four, five different FX presets. So let's just change that to heavy metal. And all of a sudden the FX preset is heavy metal and we have five different presets again. Now I'm not saying that those five presets correspond to the five mixer options up here. So it's worth getting this right, but it is good to know that you have options available to you. So I'm going to reset this back to pop. And the important thing here is settings. When we set those outputs up, if I just bring them back up for a minute, having said we didn't need them. Hang on. Oh, that's info. Outputs. I've got 12 stereo pairs set up as well as the auxiliaries but we'll not worry about the auxiliaries it's the 12 stereo pairs 
rid of that. OK, so we come back here and we're how many are we going to want? Stereo pairs. We've got one for the kick, one for the snare, one for the hi-hat, one for the toms. I'm going to put all the toms on one stereo pair. So that's four. One for the clap, one for the tambourine. So that's six. And then we've got these four, the overheads, the mono compression, the stereo compression in the room. So that's 10 that we need. If we look at our buses, we have a reverb bus and we have a master bus. But if we pick reverb, there's no option here to route it to a separate output. So it's on or off. So we want 10 outputs. Now, if we come here, yeah, I know it's behind me, but I'll sort that out in a minute. We go into Cubase. We can go to the activate outputs here. Now, you have to make a choice because the first output, if we route the kick drum, say, to output stereo one, and we activate output stereo one, it picks up the title here. If we change that to kick, that will change to kick. So I'm inclined to leave it alone. But then we'll go through, we'll pick up the snare, stereo two, hi-hat, stereo three, toms, four, 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 five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So they're all now set up. So back here in contact, we can I'll activate them all. So we'll close that for a minute. And we come here and we can't see them. If we open up the mixer, you can see that we now have all of these channels. But if you want to see them in the project window, all you do is hover over there for the show hide automation and it drops them all down. So if I change that to kick, you'll see what I was talking about before. It changes the whole thing to kick. So I'm going to change that back to drums. I just live with the fact that my kick is called drums. Then we have snare, hi-hat, toms, clap, tambourine, overheads, comp mono, room, and comp stereo. Now, of course, that's everything set up, but we know that we don't actually need the toms because there's no toms in this song. There's no clap, there's no tambourine. So all you do is if you've bothered to set them up in the first place, and as you'll see, they've now picked up the nifty uh, allocation, you just turn them off. It loses that what they were because you've deleted them. And we now have in our mixer and in our project window, drums, so kick, snare, hi-hat, overheads, compression mono, room and compression stereo. Now, comp mono and comp stereo are turned off. They're muted in contact. So you would want to turn them back on. They're actually zeroed out as well in this mixer. So you're on a double nothing there. There's no way they're coming through until you actually activate this output. So what you have now is two sets of faders. You've got the kit balance from there, plus the ability to alter the kit balance here. Why would you want to do this? You've got all these nice effects here. Let's go back to 
kick. You've got EQ, transient, compress. You can turn these off if you don't like them. You can alter the balance of the in and out mics here and the top mic and the bottom mic and how much bleed. So you can use all the effects of the contact effects. But say you didn't want to use their reverb. Mute that out. You now have a separate channel within Cubase for each one of your instruments. So say you want to put a particular compressor on the snare, or you want to route the whole thing in different amounts to your own reverb. It's there. You have all the facilities that are within Cubase or your own DAW at your fingertips, rather than just using the effects that are available within Contact itself. See, told you it was easy. Now then, I'm going to take a short pause whilst I play this through to pick up all the different voices to show you that it actually does work. Back in a minute. OK, so I've run the song through, having purged the samples to pick up all the samples I do need for this song. And as you can see, that's reduced the memory footprint considerably. What I'm now going to do is close contact, open the mixer view and the drum view here with all the channels that we are actually using, or most of them, on display. And we can just squeeze that down so we can fit it, fit in the compression stereo and we'll let it run and see what we've got. As you saw, we haven't got any of the mono or, com or stereo compression. So we'll open that back up, go into the kit mics, and we'll zero them. Now then, they're animals. Close that again, and we'll let that in very slowly. A little goes a long way with those. The one thing you may have noticed is that the overall volume level of the drums within the mixer has dropped. I can't offer you an explanation as to why that is, but it is something you need to be aware of. The bass and drums were well balanced when I originally had contact coming out of a single stereo pair, the master output. Now, the bass is well loud. Just something to be aware of that your drum group overall will have lost some volume, but you obviously still have the headroom to effect it and to bring the, the overall level back up should you need to. As always, I hope that's been useful. And if you have found these videos of use, uh, please think about liking and subscribing. And if you're in a generous mood, you could buy me a cup of coffee at the link below. You can also download my drum maps for Native Instruments uh, Complete and some of the Toon Track drum sets from the same place, um, again, oddly enough, for the cost of a cup of coffee. All of which leads me to say, until next time, you take care of yourselves and cheers. <laughs>